What's up guys, my name's Anton Suarez, and welcome to part one of the Gen 2 installation guide. So, just to start out the tutorial, head to www.gen2.org, it's going to be in the description below, along with every other link I show during the tutorial series. Uh, head to the website, and we're going to head to the download section. So go to downloads, and now we're going to select our d installation medium. So for me, I'm going to be grabbing the AMD64, aka 64-bit installation CD. So I'll download this. So now that I'm downloading the installation CD, you also have to select yours. So depending on your architecture of your CPU, Gen 2 has every possible architecture you could think of, AMD 64, which is 64-bit, 32-bit x86, uh, Alpha Arm, HPPA, i64, IA64, things we've never heard about, things most people, the general consumer, will not be using. Most of us have either 64-bit or 32-bit. For me, this tutorial is going to be based on 64-bit. The reason why, don't be confused if it says AMD. It's not really AMD. AMD just made the 64-bit standard back in 2004, I believe, which was where 64-bit came about, and they're the ones who basically invented the 64-bit architecture, and then, a and then Intel later on adopted a very similar or almost identical architecture later on. So don't be confused by the naming. I was confused, and that's why when I first tried this a long time ago, I did this one by accident, because I was like, yeah, I don't have AMD, but no, it doesn't mean that. Next thing, the handbook. I'll have this in the description below as well. We're going to be following the AMD 64 handbook, 64-bit handbook, because I have 64-bit. This is the handbook we'll follow. Most of the steps are the same for 60 um, for 32-bit. But if you're on 32-bit, still follow the tutorial. Just make sure you're also you're you're make sure you're looking at the 32-bit tutorial on the the handbook. I'm going to say it wrong, but make sure you're looking at the 32-bit handbook just so you're getting the correct files and stuff like that. Just the steps may be slightly different for a few of the commands. So if you're 32-bit, make sure you're looking at that. And with that said, let's uh, jump right into the tutorial. So now that we've booted up, so saying you've made a USB stick or you burned a CD, um, I've made tutorials in the past on that. I have a video on how to do that. I'll make a bootable USB stick. Once you've done that, boot it, you reboot your computer, go into the BIOS, figure that out, get into a BIOS, and then boot from the USB stick. And you'll be pre presented with this screen. So for Gen 2, we're going to press F1, and we're going to select, we're going to type out Gen 2. And uh, I am in VirtualBox. So the virtual all right great so now that we are fully booted up um, we're gonna start the tutorial so the first step we're gonna be doing is getting seeing if we have network connectivity so we're gonna do ping dash c3 www.google.com and we do so that's a good first step if we don't that's what we have to troubleshoot so for other people who might not have internet connectivity out of the box we have to run the command IP link now, IP Link will pull up the interface that we have for Gentoo. So we have ENP 0S3, and that is our and that is our networks card, basically ID. So what we'll run if we don't have network connectivity, you will run IP Link set ENP 0S3 up, and that'll just set the interface up, the network interface up, and then you'll run the ping seek three command again and you should have network connectivity if you do not again have the handbook open in another window I have that open as well and just you can test your network and troubleshoot it and there's a lot of different uh, resources you have to manual network configuration to loading certain kernel modules manually to get your network to work so that might be a thing you have to do um, if you have a network card I've never done Gen 2 with a network card because my computer does not currently have one. But the command I'll show you regardless is IW config and then ENP0S3 or your network. You're going to insert your own network uh, interface name. So when you run IP link, you'll get your own different name than mine. So the next step is configuring network. So when we true root into our install environment later on, we have internet connectivity still. So for the command for that is going to be, we'll clear this out first. We'll do IP link again. We'll see the interface name. We'll do DHCPCD ENP 0S3 and sending commands to master process. That's, that's it. That will be for later just so we have internet access when we 
Chirrut. All right, so the next step, so preparing this is just getting all our basic uh, hard drive formats and hard drive partitions set up. And for that, we'll be using parted. So here we go. We'll do parted dash a optimal slash dev slash SDA. Now we're in parted. I actually really do like parted a lot more than I like uh, F disk or any other other ones. So MK label GPT because it basically uses and you'll see in a second it basically uses this normal like almost like talking like set this up make this it's very easy to kind of understand the the syntax of it. So we're going to put the units in MIB megabytes. Well, MK PART make partition primary one and three we're not doing swap in this tutorial so that's one kind of thing if you want to make swap you have to do that on your own name one grub set one bios grub on print and again this is not a uefi tutorial this is not going to be for people who are using uefi motherboards if you do have a uefi motherboard there's a lot of good documentation on the handbook I have a UEFI motherboard, at least I think I do, and I tried the UEFI method and little slight changes that they have, and it didn't really, it didn't boot for me. I had to go back into the CD and redo my grub installation for non-UEFI, and then it booted up, so I'm not really sure about that. So now we have the grub BIOS partition. That's good. We're going to make the next partition, so MKPART, primary, 3131. We're named to boot. We're going to skip the swamp partition. So MKPART primary 643 negative 1. And we're going to name 3 root FS. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, if you're using a UEFI interface instead of BIOS, you'll do the command set to boot on. And we'll set that anyway. That doesn't really affect us in any way. And we'll print this just to see how we've done and so now you'll see we have all the different partitions set up we have grub we have a uh, bio scrub we have the boot partition and then we have our root FS partition so that's all set up and we can press Q on the keyboard to exit out of that and that pretty much does it we'll clear it up so we get the terminal above us the next step is creating our file system so choosing the file system we have a lot of different file systems we can choose from. We're going to be using uh, ext2 and ext4. So that's going to be pretty much the easiest way to do it. So mkfs.ext2 slash dev slash sda2. Make file system ext4 for dev slash sda3. Your uh, hard drive partitions might be a little bit different. So make sure you have a piece of paper. Just keep track of all your partition names and such. And we'll do that as well. We're not going to be doing uh, swap. And we can go on to mount our installation. So slash dev slash SDA4. No, SDA3. Sorry. Slash mount slash gen2. MKDIR slash MNT slash gen2 slash boot. Mount slash dev slash SDA2 slash MNT slash gen2 slash boot. All right, great. So we just mounted uh, the file system, and we will continue on. Okay, for the next step, we are going to be doing the date command, setting date and time. Uh, in the bottom, in the video screen you're seeing right now, you see actually a chart for military time, and that's just to help you guys out for uh, what time you have. So for me, it is 5.45. I'm going to be putting that command in. So we'll do date, and then it's going to be uh, 07. 27 so July 27th it's 15 oh no it's 1744 1744 1700 hours 44 minutes so that oh, was actually now it's 45 and the year is 2016 and there we have it the date command so uh, that's finished and now we have date and time set and I'll can get rid of the little picture love OBS really do all right so the next start is getting our stage 3 tarball so we'll clear that out. We'll do cd slash mnt slash gen2. And the next command will be links. And this is one of the coolest things when I really started trying to do gen2 a couple months ago now. This was the coolest steps I run into. I was like really surprised it had something like this. And you'll see in one second. So type out the link. I'd recommend just pausing the video. 
on getting the link <clears throat> will go to Lynx. So Lynx is basically a text-based web browser that comes built in with Gentoo Linux. And now we're here, let me just check how you're seeing this. It's all good, great. Um, in here, we can go down and we can go to downloads. And in downloads, we're looking for the stage three. So for me, I have AMD 64, like I said before. Uh, stage three, AMD 64, 64 bit. If you had x86, it's right up here. Yeah, so stage three, i686. That would be for the people who have 32 bit. For me, I have do not have 32 bit, I have 64. So bam, we'll press enter, press enter again, and uh, down on the keyboard, down on the arrow keys to select OK, and press enter, and we'll download that. Depending on your internet speed, this could take a few seconds to maybe a couple minutes. All right, great. So once that's finished, we'll just do control C, and there we go. Now we have the stage three tarball. Now in the handbook, there's a bunch of different checks too. You can check, uh, verify if everything's uh, good with it. You can check sum it whole bunch of stuff. We're not going to be doing that. I don't really see the need in doing it. Maybe there is. Who knows? We're going to do LS. We'll do tar XV JPF stage 3 AMD 64 dash 2016 721.tar.bz2 now, before we press enter, we have to make sure we add this at the end. A dash dash A X X A T T R S X outers. Now we can press enter and have an error. It's great. Spell something wrong. Ah, I see. Right there. Zero seven. My fault. All right, and there we go. So this is basically stage three. Is a bunch of different tools we're going to be needing to. Um, basically, it's basically a Linux file system, and not file system, it's a bunch of it's package programs and stuff that we're going to be needing to continue our installation packages, things like that, drivers, that we'll need to continue and build the kernel. It's basically the kernel coming out, and we'll see that in a second. So now that that's finished, stage 3 has been successfully unpacked. Uh, I'm going to end part one here. As always, my name's Anton Suarez. Please rate, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in part two of the Gen 2 installation guide.